Now, you and Rob started out together, what about, or we're going to be going back 13, 15 years now? Yeah, not quite that much, about 10 or 11, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And you were singing um, covers, yep. and all of a sudden you started throwing in uh, some of your original stuff, and people applauding them as much as they were the covers, so you decided to do your own stuff, and that was, wasn't until, what, uh, 2006, when, uh, 2007, when you released uh, Sweetwater? Yeah, we, we actually did a, an album we, we recorded here in Harvey Bay as a demo album. Uh, we wanted, to, wanted an album of, of original stuff to send out to festivals and stuff to try and get a few better gigs. And uh, that, that was in about 2003, and that had a, a really early recording of The Man in the Picture on it. Mm -hmm. um, all original stuff again, mm -hmm. but uh, it was a, virtually an El Cheapo uh, just to, as a, to use as a demo. And that's the, that's the CD that actually went to, to Ian McNamara on Australia all over and, and the, the track that he played that particular year so when we came to do the Sweet Water album we ran a lot of songs past our producer and, and he said to us I, I don't think the man in the picture has run its race he said I think we should do a new version of it and that's the version we've got now with the pedal steel guitar and the guitar riff George Harrison like guitar riff in it and it's a, it's a great you know much bigger production yes of it song. is how did you get together you and Robert we just went to a blues club uh, we didn't know one another we were just at a blues club together one day and they used to have sort of jam session before they had the main artist on us and this particular day Phil Manning from Chain was the artist yes yes, we, yes no and, Phil Manning yeah and Rob and I got up with a with a drummer and, and did a few few songs together and uh, and Phil wanted a bass player and a drummer and a guitar player to, to play a set with him at the end of his acoustic set do a few sort of electric numbers the drums and bass and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we offered our services and actually played a really good set with Phil and had a had a ball and thought well the three of us lived in Harvey Bay we might as well you know kick it off so we we started a cover band together and and played cover music I suppose for oh you know four or five years before we actually started into the original music like Kevin said before um, you know got to a stage where people liked our original stuff as much as our cover stuff and, and we we'd done the cover stuff for, for that many years and sort of got a bit jaded with it so yes. we thought yeah. hang it we'll uh, we'll just concentrate on, on our original music and you do all the festivals or you used to do the festivals yeah we do as many as we can Rob's a bit hard to get away sometimes got another business here in Harvey Bay and uh, sort of trying to trying to wind that back as much can but uh, yeah we've got a we've got a new van this year and, and uh, plans are to do a heck of a lot more touring around the country so people can see it. you've been to town working with Gimpy Master and you played yeah. the pack crowds there and all that and we said mentioned that now your uh, public music company uh, Pacific International Music for Project yep. Limited. Now you've got offices here in Queensland and uh, Nashville yep. with Mike Plant is running the um, American side of it. Yep. Basically what does that involve mate? Well when we did our Sweet Water album Mike had been producing records in Brisbane for oh, quite enough 10 years or something. He'd done 50 odd albums, country country albums but, but he was always on the on the edge of country, he didn't do any mainstream stuff, he did a lot of the alternate country and uh, stuff that's a little bit different. And he knew that, uh, you know, we were pretty well set up and, and he just put it to us. He said he'd been to America a few, oh, a dozen or more times and he said there's, a, there's definitely an opening there for good songs and uh, he's made a lot of inroads and he put it to us and he moved his whole family over there. So now he's set up on Music Row and pictures Australian songs mm -hmm. for the Americans, both uh, the artists mm -hmm. and TV and whoever, whoever's interested in, in songs, original music, he, that's where he is, pitching pitching to those people. One of your neighbours has just come back from over there, Kerry McInerney. Yeah, that's right. And um, she went over there for the, um, what was it, the World Performing Arts Championships. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Come, and come back with one gold and four silver. And um, I heard her on an interview that said uh, she's, basically been invited back over there for put her music to TV and um, wow. you know commercials and TV shows oh, and okay. all, all that type of stuff so yeah, she's, she's going back over there shortly to do that are you guys looking to do something similar or you just don't want to put the songs get the songs out there yeah I mean you gotta the Americans really don't get the Australian accent. Um, well, that's when, why they got Keith Urban. Whenever we, whenever we, pitch, whenever we pitch, pitch our songs over there, you know, a lot of my songs have been pitched, and, and you know, they like I say, Mike's opened a lot of doors, and he's he's got inroads. He's pitched some of my stuff to George Strait and Alan Jackson and Dixie Chicks, and you know, the top line people. Mm -hmm. But they need to hear it sung by an American. So every time no. they do that, they actually have to get an American singer in to sing them because um, the Americans just don't get the Australian accent. 
you know, as, as long as the songs are going to do okay, then then that's the main thing. And and when you get down to it, you know, the, the quality of the singers over there is so high. You now you can you can get a man off the street to come in and do your demos for you, and you think, God, if you were in Australia, you'd be a superstar. <laughs> and he can't he can't get a gig over there. You know, there's so many singers. Yeah, well, I think it was uh, Lee Koenig and said that the best in Australia yeah. is the worst in America. Yeah. Oh, there's so many good singers over exactly. there. Oh, well, it's a big place, isn't it? Well, it is for 64 sure. million people. So oh. You know, I still think, I still think, you know, we're, we're there with the belief that, that we have songs in our catalogue that are good enough to make those records. We're still waiting for that big, big single to be cut by somebody, but we're hacking away there and, and we've got songs on hold by some pretty high-profile people. As well as that, Mike's doing a little bit of production over there of, of some artists and, uh, like I say, also pitching songs to TV and any other media that w- wants music. Now, look, I hear you call your music Organic Countries. Yeah. Now, where did, how did this come about and what is Organic Countries? Well, like I said before when I was talking about Mike, he, he tends to produce stuff, uh, you know, the, the artists that he produced tend not to be mainstream country, but probably a little on the edge of country or alternate country or, you know, the, the, the boundaries are blurred these days. It's really hard to, to call something country or not country, you that's know, right. because uh, you listen to something that one of the major artists does and you say, oh, geez, that's not country. But, you know, the, the, the boundaries are blurred and when we call ourselves organic country, you know, we, we like the organic instruments, the, um, the banjos and mandolins and Rob plays all those and as well as ukuleles, he's got a variety of ukuleles mm. and, uh, you know, we like those those traditional type instruments, yeah. acoustic sort of instruments. So our stuff doesn't have scream and telecasters and that sort of thing in it. It's more, I suppose, more folky, and you know, it suits the style of writing that, that I do. And I think we're all in the industry and all trying to make a mark, and and we all need a point of difference. Mm, and exactly. you know, hopefully we've got a we've got a style that someone hears a song and goes, oh, that sounds like the Bobcats. There's a hit song, then there's a dozen songs that sound like it. Uh, if I can jump in here, Brisbane author and um, music journalist uh, Richie York described, described your music. Um, it's that out on the patio kind of feel that, that takes it to another place. <laughs> That's very profound, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> 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 they certainly have. I wonder what he meant. <laughs> As you say, go. It's like folky, but it's still like you know that country feel about it. And you can sit mm. there and you can you can relate to every song and every word that you write in so, in one way or another. Yeah, well, that's that's good. Uh, you know, that that's the ultimate compliment if people come up here at the end of a show and and say, you know, that song you sung, I never heard that before, but that reminds me of when I was a kid, or reminds yeah. me of my dad, or reminds yeah. me of something. <laughs> And I even had a guy at Tamworth this year, like we, we played the pub there, this is two o'clock in the afternoon or something, and we come off stage, <clears throat> Judy said, oh, you got to, my wife said, oh, you got to talk to this man, he really wants to see you. So I went over, and here's this fella, and he's, his tears are rolling down his face, Aww. and he said, God, I wish I had a father like yours. He said, that, that song is so good, and I said, you must have had a good relationship with your dad too, and he said, nah, not at all, but he said, that song just gets me. <laughs> so, you know, even people that, that don't, didn't have a good relationship with a dad if, yes. if a song can bring that sort of emotion out in them it's just uh, you know it, it makes it all worthwhile if i can jump in there an instance at, at gimpy last year with your the uh, wine bar there and oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you'd already done that <laughs> done that man in the picture and there's a group of about 20 people come in and they <laughs> And a woman went up, Gary, can you play Man in the Picture? He said, we've already done it. Oh, please, 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 please. So they did it again. They, they, they were all up dancing and carrying on. Yeah, they, they had, uh, that was fantastic because they stood in front of the stage and linked arms and sang the song with us while we sang it. Mm. Oh, it was, it was very emotional.